Jason and Eric have made the 17-hour journey from Virginia to Iowa, the land of giants. Eric Hale wasted no time in punching his Iowa tag. Hey, Eric has an absolute slob on the ground. Eric harvested a world-class Boone and Crockett buck of a lifetime. And this is, uh, this is something else, man. This is, uh, like, I, it's giant. where do you go from, from <laughs> this? Drum roll, we've got one big deer down in Iowa. We're on cloud nine, the stars are aligned. We got four days, four days. Jason's going to get a crack at something. Now it's Jason's turn to see if he can harvest an Iowa giant of his own, or will he make the long drive back to Virginia empty-handed? Eric and Jason have Iowa tags this year. They're heading out to the to the farm out there. The first thing they do when they get to the camp is get the relay of Keegan's unbelievable hunt. When the guys get to deer camp, they meet up with Chase Rolfson and his son, Keegan. Keegan will be hunting with Jason this week, but before Keegan got to camp, he had some success back on his home farm. Keegan was hunting on his family farm with his girlfriend, Samantha, filming. God, Samantha Claire wants in with us. Keegan was hoping for a big one, but not just any big one. He had his eyes set on the G2 buck. And fortunately for this young hunter, on the second night of the hunt, that buck made his way right in front of Keegan's blind. Keegan was hoping for was right in front of his blind. By the time Keegan could draw his bow, this buck was walking out of the field and not <laughs> stopping to give Keegan a chance at an ethical shot. Shoot. However, 30 minutes later, the giant returned and Keegan wasn't gonna let this bruiser get away again. Girlfriend's first time filming. It was a very stressful night before we found this guy. And I'm just so thankful that we found him. Keegan obviously has a lot more willpower than me because I remember if I were in high school and I was in a blind with my girlfriend and she was filming me, very little hunting would have gotten taken place. <laughs> Jason is hoping that with Keegan along for the hunt, maybe he'll bring some of his good luck with him. But before Jason can start hunting, he needs to make sure that he's scent free. Alright. You know, during gun season we don't we don't hunt a lot of mornings because we feel like we do more harm and push deer you know then we do good so we love to get out right around glass scout just see what's going on while the guys were doing their morning scout they caught sight of a great buck that made jason change his mind about waiting until the evening to start hunting we found this big deer and he's bedded down in this little bitty draw in the middle of the field i got a perfect wind a perfect way to stalk him well, here's what we're doing. We just seen that deer and we literally ran home. We picked up Eric and Trevor and they're going to set up high and they're going to watch us while we stalk this deer. And so we have the black death ninja wagon. <laughs> Obviously right. this deer's never seen this truck because he should know when this truck shows up stuff dies. <laughs> so, I feel like we're literally trying to rob a bank. I mean, I've got a wheel man that's dropping us off. I've got a spotter that's spotting for us. <laughs> oh, we'll see what happens. Hero or zero. The stops work sometimes, yes, sometimes no, but we're gonna take a swing at it. Let's go right here. 
here we are. I mean, this is crazy. Me and Keegan are crawling through the middle of this field, trying to get in range of this deer. Well, we know we're within 100 yards of him, and he's just, the grass is so tall, he's bedded, we just absolutely, we can't find him. We, we don't see where he's at, where he's laying, but we know he's right there. He didn't go anywhere. We finally got where we needed to be. We literally crawled the last 200 yards through this cornfield. We just need him to stand up now. We can't figure out he's somewhere right in this ditch. He jumps up, he runs, he never even slows down. I mean, I'm grunting at him, trying to get him to stop, and finally I'm yelling at him like, hey, hey, and he's just gone. He stops at like 300 yards and just turns around and looks. Um, he wasn't a giant, but he was a big, old, mature whitetail, and, and that was probably one of the most funnest hunts I've ever had, was just trying to stalk him. You know what? You win some and you lose some. Dang, it was a big eight for him. <laughs> we knew he was right here somewhere. We just wanted to get him to stand up. By God, he didn't stand up, stand still. He stood up and run. Oh, like we said earlier, hero or zero, and me and Keegan are zero right now. So, brother, that's pretty cool anyway. <laughs> And subscribe to our channel like it you're gonna get that little notification bell it's gonna go off let you know when something new hits follow subscribe happy hunting this fall we love everybody thank you again jason and eric have arrived in iowa and these fellows didn't waste any time right off the bat jason went on a stalk after a giant eight pointer that had bedded down jason missed out on that bridge but it's only the first day of the trip and jason knows that when you come to iowa good things can happen. We have put so much hard work and effort into this one hunt. We're 17 hours from here where we live, but this is the fifth time we've been on this farm. And I'm hunting down in a bottom, a place we call the zoo. And then there's a big 10 and several big eights in there. And I'm hoping one of them comes out and makes my hunt short. We're hunting down here in a hole that we call the zoo. We elected to sit here in this ground blind. We built these platforms um, to get them up off the ground back in the summer just so we could see everything. I don't... Jesus. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. There's two big people. just have gotten a blind. <laughs> just doing my interviews and Keegan's like, big buck, big buck. I had one of my Browning cameras down here and got a ton of video. It's a real big tall eight pointer and there's a big wide nine. They were both right there. The eight pointers come out in the cut beans. The nine pointer was right there. I want to see where he went because he was standing right there with that eight. Gotta make a decision. Here we are, first night. I've got a decision to make. I've got a big eight pointer at 200 yards. I wish he would come a little closer. He's like 195 yards. I mean, I'm comfortable in making that shot, but it's the first afternoon. Huh. He just decides to walk up the opposite direction of the field for some reason, and that's a decision that I'm gonna have to live with. Should I have let that deer walk or not? They sure do look good walking away from me. Make sure you subscribe and like the page. On top of that, make sure you click the little notification bell. That way you'll be one of the first ones to know when a new video drops. Jason Bowers is in Iowa chasing after giant whitetails. 
missed out on one and let another walk. Now he's moved to a new set and he's ready to fill a tag. I'm hunting in a stand we call death row, and I know there's a possibility of seeing something. We don't exactly know what's in this corner, but we're getting ready to find out. The stand Jason is heading to tonight has brought good luck to the guys in the past. Jason's going to death row tonight. The last time I was in death row, the seat was hot, and I took a big buck down. Chris Ward harvested a great buck named Cheeto from the same stand Jason is hunting out of tonight. That's the biggest deal of my life. Hopefully, there's one more for Jason. Keegan and I, we passed a real good eight last night. We were trying to decide to shoot him. Both of him and I were talking about it. It's just the simple fact of you're in Iowa. It's, uh, there's no fact to it, you're in Iowa. You never know what's gonna walk by. There's a big deer in here we call Goofy. He's a big nine or 10 pointer. He's real strong on one side. He's a little weak on the other. He's a 10 with kind of kickers off of his twos. There's a big eight, uh, there's a big seven. People pray for north and northwest winds during the winter. We got some awesome spots for north and northwest, but we've got so many good spots on this farm for a south. This is one of them. I mean, you catch that south wind, all these deer come out in this pit corn. I mean. The deer came out just like Jason predicted, and one buck in particular had Jason ready to grab his traditions. The only problem is that buck is out of range and daylight is fading fast. This has become a chess match now. It is a game. It is cat, it is mouse. Let's see who can get in front of who. I just seen a giant tall tine eight pointer and he come out of a draw and he went across the creek and went the other direction. I'm, and I was probably 400 yards away. So I know there's a tree down there on a point that I can get in between. And, and hopefully if he does the same thing tomorrow afternoon, then that'll be his last trip. The next day, Jason gets to work hanging a stand on the other side of the field, close to where the giant eight walked the night before. I hunted about 500 yards that way yesterday, and we seen a shooter right there on the side of that ditch, and he was an absolute giant. Every deer used this end of the cornfield, all the mature bucks anyway, so, so man, I can shoot this whole hillside. I can shoot all that hillside. I think it's gonna be a good evening. Jason gets set up in the stand across from where he hunted last night. Before too long, one of his shooters makes his way into the field. But as luck would have it, this buck walked out right in front of the stand where Jason was the night before. Right now I'm playing a game of chess with all these deer. And they seem to be winning. I'm losing. I've just seen a good buck walk out literally 20 yards from the stand I hunted yesterday. That's what happens. It's deer hunting, you move on them try to figure your out, and they make you look like a fool. To add insult to injury, right before last light, that same shooter came out again. We saw a giant down here, so he moved down here. Well, a deer we call Goofy just walked out of the right under it. <laughs> He's been out twice up there to see These deer are kicking my blood. We need you to support us guys so go over hit that subscribe button hit that like button and every time we post something you're gonna get that little bell going off and you'll know instantly that you can go over and watch it and catch what's going on jason and eric are hunting in iowa eric got things started in no time harvesting a buck of a lifetime right after the guys arrived in camp but for jason this trip has been a case of wrong place wrong time these deer are kicking my but with one day left Jason is hoping he can pull off some last minute magic. Today is the last day that we're here. So we're just hanging out up on this terrace and try to decide if we want to do something different tonight or go back to the same spot we was at last night. So I don't know a lot, but I do know it's cold. And I thought I was going to be smart and bring me some coffee. And I guess Jeff or Tara had this pretty pink cup in the cabinet. I thought that'll work. But we've been out here like 30 minutes and it's already freezing cold. I don't know that it's just the pink cup sucks or it's just that cold out. But we do have the traditions with us in case we get lucky and one crosses this CRP field right here, broom sage, whatever you want to call it. But That's a 
decent nine pointer. He's getting ready to cross right here. We're trying to decide what he is. I don't know. I don't know that deer. I've not got pictures of him. That could be a shooter. That's hard to do considering it's your last day. That's one of our future, future giants. Like, <laughs> he was a 10, he's broke off his, his G4 on the right side, but that's gonna be an absolute giant. Jason has seen a lot of deer, but has yet to have a good opportunity at one of his shooters. Now it's the last time of the trip. If Jason doesn't make it happen tonight, he'll make the long drive back to Virginia empty-handed. I've still got my, my sights set on that giant eight-pointer, uh, but that doesn't mean I won't shoot something else if it walks by. All right, it is the last afternoon in Iowa, and it is super, super cold. It's super windy. There's nothing like taking it down to the wire. Eric killed an absolute giant this week. I mean, a world-class typical that'll probably net boom. You see on social media and you see everybody talking, oh, you buy your deer. There's deer by big deer behind every tree out there. Well, I'm here to tell you that this is the fifth time that Eric and I have been on this farm this year. We live 17 hours from here. We've been out here four different times, hanging cameras, checking cameras. I mean, we've got browning cameras all over this farm. And here I am at the last afternoon with about three hours left of the season. So when everybody says we buy our deer, I beg to differ. We work for our deer. That's all we've ever known is to work, you know, you, you reap what you sow and the harder you work, the, the more you benefit. So on my last afternoon in Iowa, and I'm praying that a, a good deer walks out. I mean, I seen a giant right here two evenings ago. We seen another shooter right under the stand I hunted even before last. Everything's 250, 300 yards away, and I just don't want to take that shot. So we'll just see what happens, see if I can buy another deer tonight. What do you think? I got a hundred dollar bill in my pocket. You think one will come to it? <laughs> Jason's last hunt followed suit with the rest of the week. He saw some bucks, but didn't have an opportunity at one of his shooters. There is no worse feeling than to travel five trips, 1,100 miles every time to put in work, shed hunting, putting your food plots in, getting stands hung, putting up blinds, building blinds, remapping food plots, checking trail cameras, putting out monster meal. Then you go back out there, you spend five hard days in absolute brutal temperatures, and you still gotta eat a tag sandwich. Now, I don't know about you, but to walk away from that, Jason never said one negative word about it. He said, I had a blast. I had an absolute time of my life. I mean, uh, kudos to him because Dude takes it all the time. He took one right on the chin. He just gets back up, dusts himself off, and he'll do it all over again next year. It was all worth it, and I consider it a win at the end of the day. I didn't kill a deer, but I am very thankful and blessed to be able to do what we do. At least we're able to sit here and watch the sunset. That means a lot. Well, the sun has set on my last day here in Iowa. Did I kill a deer? Nope. Did I have a blast? Yep. Um, I got to hang out with friends who are like family. Um, I got to chase whitetails. That's what I love to do. You know, at the end of the day, sometimes it's not all about the kill, but it's more about the experience and who you got to experience that with. So I didn't kill a deer, but in my mind, it was a very successful trip.